Hello, everyone. It's good to see you. Thank you for showing up. Let me know if you can see and hear me and all that. And if you're new to using Crowdcast, um, one of the things you, um, if the broadcast slows down or you lose sound or video, usually refreshing the page works. Let's go. Oh, good. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, so just hit refresh if you end up having any difficulties with the sound or the audio, that usually fixes it. So it's so good to see you all and to be starting a summer session of Sweep and Smile. This is a good time to be building habits and routines because we can kind of experiment with what works and doesn't work without the pressure of um, getting the other things done and having those other things that take priority um, and other things that just take our mind. So it's a good, the summer, you know, it's nice to have a project to be working on in the summer and sleep and smile doesn't take that much time. Not really. So it's a great summer project because you're thinking through what you need to get done and you're practicing it, but, uh, it's not going to take that much time out of your day because summers are full of things like swim lessons and, you know, park days with friends or whatever else you have going on. Um, it's, it's a good timing for me because next week we start our school routine back up. It's only our summer term is uh, lighter. We only do about half of our work in the summer, but math gets done mainly <laughs> math and morning time. And um, so this will, this will pair well with the basic routine structure while still giving us plenty of time in the day to do fun summer things with friends. So um, I would like you to start off by sharing in the chat box the main goal that you have for working through Sweep and Smile. Um, you know, we we can start off, we probably are all doing this with many desires, many goals, uh, maybe with perfectionism, you know, tr wanting to do all the things and do all the things well. But instead of trying to do all the things, we need to be focusing in on what's going to be most important and most effective for us. So, ooh, cheerfully get the bedrooms clean regularly. All right. Pay attention to the piles of clutter I've been avoiding. Establish a good morning routine. Good. Bedroom and bathroom. Good. So, yes, what is your focus area or your focus routine that you know you really need to zero in on and think about and practice that one and see the other things as supporting that one. Hold on a second. Thank you <laughs> for that brief interlude. <laughs> Hopefully that was really muted. <laughs> I guess everyone knows the kind of things. Anyway, we just got back from some lessons. So kids are still a little uh, needing direction. Um, <laughs> um, so you want to have one focus goal so that you don't feel super scattered. Um, you don't want to be trying to do all the things and do all the things perfectly right out of the gates. There, there are going to be a lot of things that you're doing and you're going to be making progress. But if you have one specific focus area that you're really zeroed in on as this is the part that I need to nail or at least need to make progress in, then you have a set of priorities and instead of feeling the pressure to do it all, you can zero in on what's going to make the most difference for you. And if you need to let other things slide, and we all have times where that is the case, then you know 
where to put your focus. And so instead of feeling pressured or scattered, you have already made the decision that you know where to zero in on. So, uh, oh, it's awesome for smile to be the part that, um, that you're focusing in on. I think that's perfect. Um, so see if you can phrase that in a single sentence, a motivational statement sentence, you know, a goal focused statement. Um, like I want to improve our bedroom routines. I want to be consistent and, and even sometimes even being consistent is too vague. I mean, it really shouldn't be right. We mean like do it every time. <laughs> but the more specific you can be, the better on this statement. So I want to, don't say do all the routines every day. <laughs> What's the one routine that you don't want to miss? So I want to do my morning routine every weekday of Sweep and Smile and write that out. And then you have that go-to, you've thought it through, you've made that decision, it's clear in front of you, and that will help you as the course is going on and we're practicing and we're thinking, you know where your priority is. Um, let's see, is it better to have a project or a routine goal or can we have both? Um, you could try both, but I would pick one, and I don't think one is better than the other. I think it depends on um, where you're at and what you need. So this this was um, one other thing that I wanted to say. So first, I know that a lot of people who are taking this session of Sweep and Smile have done it before. So I think that the the focus for those who have not done it before and those who have done it before needs to be different or probably will be different. Um, so share on the in, in the chat, if you've taken Sweep and Smile before, um, let us know, let everyone else in the chat box know that you are a second or third or maybe even fourth timer and share what your biggest takeaway was or your biggest progress, your biggest goal met the other times because that might help other people get ideas for realistic goals. Um, if you are, if this is your first time through Sweep and Smile, then I would recommend not having absolute consistency or doing it every day be your focus goal, like you are practicing that and that is a part of the program. But um, as you work through material, you're, you're going to be discovering what the best plan is for you. And um, it's going to take iterations. So you're gonna try something out and there's going to be, I mean, ju there just will. You're not going to have the perfect perfect routine the first time through. So you're going, or, you know, the first week, if this next week we're going to be working on our morning and evening routine, it's not like you're just going to be able to pick that tomorrow and run with it and have that be absolutely the exact right thing right out of the starting gates. Is that is that true? Has that been other people's experience? Um, you're going to want to try something, to start with something, to go through the process and pick a short routine. And then when we do that troubleshooting part on next Friday, uh, we're going to be narrowing that down, figuring out what didn't work, why it didn't work, and how we can improve it. But um, you don't have to have it just right out of the starting gates and then do that every day all week or all six weeks you need to have something to start with a starting point and do start <laughs> from that starting point and then hone in focus in iterate practice uh, try something new uh, let me know if that clanking is picking up on the microphone and too distracting i can um or if it's okay okay i know this microphone shouldn't pick all that up, but 
Um, okay. Yes, it takes trial and error. Exactly. Uh, we're all used to clanking noises. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to stop it because that's my son unloading the dishwasher. So <laughs> he's helping with, with the sweeping and the smiling. Right, Hans, the smiling? He's, he probably has headphones on. He, that's why he doesn't realize how loud it is. Um, <laughs> interruptions throw us off. Recovery is hard. That is true. But when you have it worked out to what you're going to be doing, what your routines should be, it's easier to get back on track. That's one reason why we'll be writing out each step in our morning and evening routine. And then in, in, um, Shh. No conversation, please. In um, talking about interruptions throwing us off. <laughs> um, now I don't know what I was saying. Um, when you have your routine written out, then you can come back to it kind of without think without starting from scratch again and feeling like you have to rethink it out just start with your last starting point and go from there and don't um don't try to remake the routine from scratch at any time you fall off the bandwagon and then don't feel committed to doing that for the whole time could you please go eat that at the other table thank you <laughs> Um, you'll be getting worksheets every Friday. So next week is week one, but you'll get the week one worksheet tomorrow. So you'll get the worksheet for the upcoming week, the Friday before. So you have time to prepare and think things through. Um, if that's, if that's the forms you were talking about, there will be a spot for you to write things out. And they'll be, if you've done this before, they're going to be updated. So it'll have a spot for you to write out your focus goal um, for this session. And if you write that out every time and it's on your routine sheet that you're looking at every day, that will really help you keep focus. So uh, if you have not, done sweep and smile before I'll kind of start from the beginning beginning of that again and clarify if this is your first time through sweep and smile don't worry so much about consistency you need to be practicing but can um, and you will be you will be improving your consistency but your primary goal is discovering the right routines for you so don't beat yourself up or agonize or, you know, mentally punish yourself when you don't miss it or when you don't like it, pay attention and think through why. So it's a discovery process. And instead of feeling like it needs to be this perfect routine right out of the starting gates, if it doesn't work, ask questions of, of yourself. And we'll do this in the troubleshooting sessions why didn't it work? And we can figure out, you know, is it, do we need to set, set ourselves up a little bit better? Do, do we have the wrong tasks? Do we have too many tasks? Are our tasks too vague? And the real benefit of Sweep and Smile is that over the six weeks, we, we will have a re refined, personalized routine that works for us. And we aren't trying to take someone else's plan and, um, apply it in our house. We are going to be looking at our life, looking at our needs, looking at our house, looking at ourselves and our habit patterns and figuring out something that works for us. So something along that line of discovery and figuring out and practicing is the best type of goal. No nope, other table. I guess you can't walk around eating, go eat at the table. Um, yes, writing things out, that really helps. Yes, the six weeks is to make a custom plan and to pr it is to practice it. Um, if you have taken Sleep and Smile before, then 
really nailing the consistency aspect with those checklists is a great goal. But whether your focus is on discovery or on consistency, still pick a single like zone or routine that's your focus area for that. Because even discovery and consistency are still really big. And we want to have something where that's not going to shut us down. When we have fallen off the wagon or we don't feel like doing anything, we need something super clear, super specific, and not too big so that it's actually doable to just go do. <laughs> so um, you can choose discovery, creation of that custom plan, or you can choose consistency if you know you already have a plan that should work if you actually did it. <laughs> um, still pick either you know my morning routine or my evening routine or the bedrooms or the kitchen. Pick one specific area as the top priority. We will be practicing all of them, but choose your top priority area. And that's going to help. Yeah. The more you're successful in that one, in one single focus area, that's going to spread and, and it's going to help all the areas that you're trying to work on even more than if you tried to do them all evenly. Um, so really focus in and hone in on the one area so that the, that success spreads. Um, there we go. So I'm going to see what the questions are here before I move on to my other point. Let's see. Do I need a notebook? Um, yeah, Tiffany is right on here. You, If you want to have a place for taking down notes or kind of journaling through the process, you can. If you want to be doing some brain dumping, there will be some brain dump um, assignments on the worksheet. But really, you can just print the each week's worksheet and use the back side of that for the brain dump part. Um, there will be six worksheets and those are really all you need um, to work through Sweep and Smile. And those will arrive every Friday. There are always brain dumps. That's right. It's because they're good. Uh, so how or where does Sweep and Smile fit in with simplified organization and or work the plan? Uh, so it's mm, module three, right? <laughs> I think. Module three is, um, no, two. Module two has health and house routines. And you're just kind of supposed to brain, brain dump a little bit and figure out, mm -mm, what did I say? <laughs> you're just supposed to to figure this out, to start brain dumping about it. it, but it doesn't. And I kind of walk you through like, these are the areas of your house, you know, to there's, there's a process for figuring out what needs to be done in the house. And, but it's just one fraction of one module out of the six and sweep and smile is really the zoom in on what ends up being half of a section of one module in, in simplified organization. So this is a module to um, zoom in and really get that nailed down part. Um, oh, that's a good technical note for how um, Sweep and Smile works. Hold on a second. I don't know if it was supposed to be ballet, but it looked more like kicking each other with peanut butter in their mouth. Um, yes, so in Crowdcast, you can see the schedule. This is the same link, actually, for all of our troubleshooting chats, and all the replays are also available at this link. And there's a little word up at the top that says schedule. I don't know, on my screen, I'm pointing at it, but I don't know if that's mirrored and it's actually here. <laughs> uh, it says schedule. You can click that and go. <laughs> is it is it 7 a.m. Are there a lot of East Coasters? <laughs> See, it's 10 for or it's 10 for East Coast. I'm West Coast, but 
at 7 a.m. it's not interrupting like no, nothing it's not interrupting anything else <laughs> Okay, so right up here then it says schedule and uh, you can click that and see all the different things. Yeah, I know you the other cool thing about Cradcast is that you see the little where it says ask a question down there. You can add questions ahead of time. So you can come in, go up and click the session for the week that you have a question about and add a question anytime. But like you could do that right now. Um, if you clicked on a different chat, this would turn off. You wouldn't see it anymore because it would take you to that next one. And it would say like how many, you'd have a week wait to go. But you can add questions in that section ahead of time. The app is less less useful. <laughs> it's, it's harder to navigate those different buttons. But um, yeah, and then the replays will go on the program page. Okay. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the house will be quieter too at 7 a.m. my time. Um, mm -mm. Go, go read up in your room, please. Okay. So, the other thing that I wanted to talk about on this kickoff chat was the this idea of plateaus that I've been thinking about lately. And I, when I realized this applies not only to personal weight loss, but also to housekeeping, <laughs> which I've definitely learned over the last year of doing Sweep and Smile myself. Um, plateaus um, are a real thing and, and plateaus are usually discouraging to us. And um, I think that we can shift our perspective on what plateaus actually are and what plateaus actually mean and acknowledging the, the reality and the benefit of plateaus can help us actually break past them, be more likely to break past them, and then also recognize the... Um, the good in them, the good that we're getting being in a plateau. Um, exactly, because they're better than going backwards. <laughs> and so I know in past sweep and smiles, we've talked about entropy, how everything tends to disorder in the world. And that's whatever the second law of thermodynamics, and it definitely applies in the house. So we're on a treadmill. Um, and the the forces of nature are constantly taking us back, 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 back. And we're trying to get ahead, ahead, ahead. And that's why it takes extra work to get ahead. Because if you just do the maintenance, you're just staying where you're at. You're not actually getting ahead. And so we think that we should put a maintenance routine in place and that we should be getting ahead with that. And that's actually wrong. The maintenance routine keeps us in the same place we're at. And we need it because otherwise we're going backwards and um, we have to do little sprints or pick up the pace if we want to make progress. Yes, maintenance is treading water. So, so maintenance is also the plateau, right? Yes, I wrote about this in my uh, Saturday email, the weekly review. Um, staying in one spot is the plateau and it's progress right it is not falling behind it's not things getting worse or your progress being undone but a lot of times that's the way we we that's how we feel about it when we're there because we aren't getting ahead or making progress or we don't see the progress uh or we think of progress only as um, gaining ground, we don't realize the progress that we've made in having a maintenance routine that keeps us in the same place in a different, in a better spot. Um, keeping that maintenance level and, and not drifting back and then catching up when, if we're on a long plateau, that is way better than the boom and the bust, right? So, 
having a plateau is way better than a lot of other options and um and actually staying at a plateau for a while can can help us make more progress later because we're establishing a new set point this is the new normal but it's not normal unless we've been doing it for plenty of time right it takes time to establish a normal and uh, even six weeks is kind of borderline. So you're, we're going to take some six this six weeks and practice routines and improve, and um, and get things in a better spot. But then we need to stick with it, and um, maybe not necessarily get into exactly the same. You can't just be here. You need. You need to wait. Nope. Then you can't go go up and wait. Uh, yes, it's establishing that new normal. So um, it takes time, and we just need to keep practicing and not expect things to be always getting better and better and better all the time. This is a part of the process. We are establishing a, a new set point that when – things do they happen and we fall back behind, it's gonna be easier to get to that set point because that feels normal. We know what we need to do to live there. And um, it's gonna, if we fall back to our previous set point, it feels bad instead of feeling comfortable, right? Whatever is normal is what feels comfortable. And there's always discomfort in breaking past what's normal. And then we want to spend time making it normal and getting to that point of being of being comfortable with the new routine, of having it just fit in and feel like the average day. Um, yes. So move forward and smile. And, and we are never going to be perfectly satisfied with our routines life changes, our family changes, we might move and the home layout changes and all these things affect the routines and the normal and the what's required of us. And then we have to get back into shape and get into a new kind of shape. And that is always going to be uncomfortable and difficult. And we aren't looking for the plan that makes it easy and if it feels uncomfortable and difficult, uh, it, that's because you're doing it right. You're not doing it wrong. So, yes. So recognize that and give yourself the credit for moving forward. No resistance, no growth. Exactly. Um, so think of, with, with the weight loss kind of analogy, think of starting a new exercise routine. And... Um, you know, on day two or three of doing it, you don't assume that because your muscles are sore that you are doing something wrong or that you should stop the exercise routine, right? You might, you will be tempted to stop because it is uncomfortable and it's not the best feeling. But when we recognize that the soreness is coming because we're making progress, like without that, there is no progress. That is a sign that the the muscles are being worked and um, we're doing what we should be doing, then the soreness becomes more of a reward almost and less of a punishment. But it, that's kind of in the mindset and in um, how we visualize, how we think about the kind of growth and progress we want to be making. We're not trying to... Um, achieve a finish line or a state of perfection. We aren't assuming that if I had this figured out, everything would fall into place and suddenly my life would be easy. We aren't um, establishing control over circumstances and other people. We're only working on self-control and self-discipline, which is 
uh, much harder and much more uncomfortable, but actually possible. God doesn't give us control over other people or over circumstances. He's got that. That's not totally chance and random. That's providence. Um, but he does require of us and give us self-control. So um, it takes self-control and self-discipline to push yourself to exercise. Um, you know, picture someone who's a weightlifter. And I know that there are some here that are, <laughs> I'm not, but you know, we can, we've seen that kind of thing before and they're always um, trying to be doing more than they can to build that muscle and build that stamina. And um, sometimes I think we say, okay, I want to be a weightlifter. I mean, we don't, this is the analogy, right? <laughs> Very few of us actually say that, but. We say that, okay, I want to have a clean house and I want to get my house clean every day. That's like someone who's never lifted weights going into the gym and say, okay, I decided that I'm going to be a weightlifter. We're just going to do this thing. I, you know, give me the hundred pound barbell, right? So, <laughs> uh, that's sure that's pushing yourself and sure maybe someday you will be able to but you're not going to be able to do that right out of the starting gates that's not your first step that's um even if that's the 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 new normal that you want to get to it's going to take you a long progress of incremental steps to get there um and the biggest piece that would get you there is not trying to kill yourself with how much you're lifting, but in being consistent and showing up every day. So, um, or every other day, I don't know, you need rest with must. Maybe this is where it breaks down because uh, I think you are supposed to put rest days. At, and okay, this, this analogy is getting beyond me, <laughs> but, um, we need to acknowledge the baby steps and um, be recognize the slow and steady progress and uh, allow time for the plateaus. So we don't need to even be pushing and pushing and pushing all, all the time. We, we can figure something out and then say, okay, this isn't where I want to end up necessarily, but this is where I need to spend some time practicing and make this the new normal so that next time things fall apart, next time we get sick and, you know, whatever causes the routines to fall apart, this will be this. I want this to be so well practiced that it will not take me so much time to jump back here to this spot. And we're going to take some time practicing this before I try to level up again. So, um, so be looking for that new plateau spot that might be right for you first. And don't feel like you have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing until you get to whatever vision you feel like you should be at. Um, so that is what I had for you for this kickoff chat. Oh, I see there's another question. So we'll, we'll do that. Um, if six weeks is barely, what do you think? Okay. Sorry, Irish mom. I'm not sure I understand the question. <laughs> can, you, can you try it? Can you, um, ask Again, and you, I'm watching the chat box, so you can just put it in there. Um, if six weeks is barely enough time, or so six weeks, in six weeks, we're going to be um, discovering and, okay, so six weeks is barely enough time to establish a routine, right? Six weeks is enough time to address all the areas that we're going to be addressing, but in six weeks, you're not going to have the perfect routine laid out for all of those areas. So for instance, the first week is the morning and evening routine. 
I bet money <laughs> that at week three or four, you might go back and, and tweak that morning and evening routine because of the time practice time and you realize, oh, I need to adjust this or uh, I'm taking too long on this. I was too specific or I mean too vague, probably not too specific. Um, I, I was making clean the kitchen my morning routine and that's unrealistic. You see, so you're going to be practicing and fine tuning as you go. And the week six is a practice week. But um, say it takes three, four, five, six weeks to adapt that routine to what really fits you. Um, what its uh, bedrooms are last, I think. Um, you're not going to, we're not going to be still working on. When sweep and smile will be over, but you'll still be practicing those that bedroom routine and perhaps still tweaking it, you know, three weeks out. But you will have been practicing that with other routines, so you'll know how to do that. So you'll have to um, <laughs> that's why bedrooms are the worst routine. So if you've done sweep and smile before and bedrooms are your main thing, you might want to take that uh, worksheet and make it your week two or whatever. Um, for the most, and bedrooms are hard, <laughs> but they are also the back rooms. So as far as what makes the most difference for running your day and having hospitality and all of that, um, for the most part, I think the, the intent behind the order of the weeks is that you have the most time practicing the most important pieces of the day and pieces of the house that will help keep things running smoothly. So, um, oh, that's, there you go. And you can also be finding things like that, Krista. Um, she says, I have to add, I just switched to natural products a week or two ago and they smell so lovely. I'm so inspired and giddy about cleaning without all the yucky smells. I'm loving using them and refreshing daily. So, you know, the, that's one thing to be thinking about as you work through, what about this process am I dreading and what can I do about it to change that? You know, can I, would change, put it, choosing a new cleaner with a smell that I like suddenly make this a rewarding experience instead of a, something that I dread, you know, finding those things where you can give yourself little incentives like that, that are tied to doing it, um, is really helpful. Um, if, and, and that sort of thing where you have a new cleaner that you like using, that's a way better reward success feeling, uh, or success. Um, it's a way better reward to use as a motivation instead of say, after I do my morning routine, um, well, after you do your morning routine, then I can have coffee. That that might be a good one because it's ju that's just triggering when it goes in your day. But say, after I fold the laundry, then I eat chocolate. You're using something that's completely unrelated to the task as a reward. And that's an external motivation. It's not actually, uh, you know, it's that's more of a treating yourself like Pavlov's dogs and going into behavioralism instead of, helping yourself enjoy the process and like the task. And that's where the smile part of the sweep and smile comes in is we aren't just trying to bribe ourselves to do what we're supposed to do. We're trying to practice actually wanting to do what we're supposed to do and enjoy the feeling of having done what we are supposed to do. So, um, yes. I like that, Heidi. So Heidi says, this is a marathon. We're practicing our gait for these six weeks. Um, so, so as you look for our um, motivations, be thinking about things that are tied to the actual practices themselves. Like um, I listen to podcasts or audiobooks while I fold laundry. So then those two things go together in my mind 
and one one helps me do the other. Um, that's that's a great way to help yourself enjoy and just get started with the routines in the first place. Okay. So, okay, one more question, and then I will wrap up and see what my children are up to now. Um, when are we supposed to do the morning routine? Before breakfast, after breakfast? I that There's not a hard and fast answer on that one. Um, we have a morning chore time. The, the kids have chores after breakfast before we start school, and... Um, so I do mine during that time, or I'm supposed to do it at that time. Um, and that's what I'm going to be practicing. I need to put it in that time because that, uh, I mean, it's too easy for me to actually get caught up answering email or that kind of thing. Um, but that is a time that works in our homes, our family's routine. And then I would be setting an example. So it makes sense for our routine, for our family, for our home, for me to do it then. Part of the process of figuring out your morning and evening routine will be figuring out the right when for it to happen. And it'll probably take experimentation. So if it's something that you just want to get up and get going with, and you can do it while other people are sleeping or while other people are doing whatever people do at your house, then try that. Or, you know, it might happen after breakfast. It might happen after you've done um, other things with the kids. Um, but it's, but it is a, these are the things that I do to start to kick off my productive time. So, um, it's so your morning routine is not going to be things like reading your Bible and praying. Those are good morning routine things to have, but sweep and smiles focus are your the house cleaning things. So think of it more like um, this isn't like my time, my my very first things so much as these are the things I do to prepare the house for the day to get myself going into productive mode. These are the first things. So mine's get myself ready, make my bed, do a quick wipe down of the bathrooms. Um, and there will be more on that for the morning and evening routine material that starts tomorrow. So, all right. And we'll probably be talking about that with the uh, at the troubleshooting chat next week. Any ideas how to stay off technology and still work on this program? Um, yeah, you can print off the worksheets and the lessons just arrive in your email. So you can just read them from your email or you can click the link that comes with each lesson. Lessons come on Fridays and Mondays. You can click the link and um, it takes you to a page with it. You can print. So um you, you can work from paper with the material pretty easily if that's your preference. Um, yeah, you can even have someone else <laughs> print it for you. Sure. Uh, you can even, so I, I, I um, like the purple on the checklists. And so, and we just have a black and white printer. So I actually sent, and this is more technology than <laughs> maybe. Um, I use the Office Depot online upload and print. So then I can go, I need to go pick them up, go to the Office Depot and pick up my color copies. Um, so, all right, more about the mor morning and evening routines with the material that's coming out tomorrow and next week. So I will hopefully see you then. And you will be seeing that first checklist and that first lesson with details about the morning routine tomorrow about noon Pacific. So thank you all for joining.